What's going on, YouTube? My name is Lucas, and today we have an absolute amazing special guest, Ryan Wall, CEO and co-founder of Valkyrie. So, Ryan, I appreciate you coming on. It's absolutely amazing to have you here uh, for two reasons. Obviously, um, because you're the CEO and co-founder of Valkyrie, but number two, uh, I did serve in the military, and to be interviewing you in what you were able to do um, is a privilege. So I just want to thank you for your service and thank you for that as well. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much for having me on and it's an honor to be interviewed by you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so that kind of leads me into my first question. How do you apply your experiences that you obtained as a soldier and as a ranger to being a CEO of a company? You know, it's, it's, I would say, especially what I had done, um, just being in a uh, ranger unit and having to, um, you know, really become very efficient at the individual level. Um, it's very similar to a startup. Um, you know, before missions, you would do PCI inspections, right? You'd make sure that all of your gear was right, all of your, your mags were loaded, and all of those little things are what you do for business, just mm -hmm checking your numbers, you're checking your charts, you're doing all the different things that, um, so while the tasks may be different, it's very similar skill sets. Um, I remember I, I did my first patrol in ranger school and I didn't have perfect accountability of all of my gear and it, it counted against me, right? I was the, the team leader and um, I had to go make sure the whole squad had all their gear done, right? And so, um, you know, all of those little tasks are what add up into, you know, running, running a company. So um, from a personal individualized skill set point of view, it's very efficient. And then also from a strategic and planning point of view as to see where the market's going. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that's one of the th biggest things I want to ask because, you know, most people don't have the opportunity to one, be in the military and especially get to the level you got to. So that was definitely one of the biggest questions I wanted to ask you, um, mm -hmm. that, which goes into my next one. Um, your guys' product is obviously for drone delivery, which I think is is absolutely going to be amazing for the future. And it's just as important as the drone itself, in my, my opinion. Um, and in September of 2019, you guys teamed up with T-Mobile to become the first smart mailbox. Can you speak about your mailbox and maybe go into a little bit of detail on that mailbox? Sure. So, uh, as you mentioned, yes, last September, um, we, we had done a demonstration over Sprint's 5G network in, in Peachtree Corners, uh, Georgia, at their Curiosity Lab. Um, we were very excited to be working with them and, you know, being able to utilize the T-Mobile Sprint network is, is a great win for us um, as well as for them. Um, so, we were really excited about that and it was really showing the, the first demonstrations of the technology coming together, you know, it was still a very crude demo and by no means the, the final result, but it really was the foundation for a lot of those systems. Um, we were testing the, the drone's ability to uh, uh, autonomously fly over the landing station, uh, locate the top of it. Um, we ended up not doing the full landing um, in, that, in that demonstration just for safety reasons. Um, but all of the communication that was happening between the drone and our landing station was occurring over 5G. Um, and so it really demonstrated a lot of that. And, and we really started building off of that. Um, we built our first mailbox prototype in 2017. Um, we tested it. We found a lot of issues that you know, we needed to fix. And so that second iteration is what we demonstrated for Sprint. Um, we're currently building the third iteration, which is going to be much, much more robust and significant and, and um, it's going to meet a lot of the challenges that we found in those first two iterations. Um, a lot of the lessons learned that we had were implemented into our drone delivery station, which is the, the seven and a half foot tall uh, locker system. Um, and so we're, we're figuring out a lot of the, the nuances in that system and then taking that over to the mailbox. So when we release that um, next year, it's, it's going to be a very dynamic system. I think it's gonna catch a lot of attention. That's awesome. I, I bet it's exciting to see the growth that, you know, from the very beginning, the prototype that starts out from the very beginning to the continuation of the growth of that box. I bet that's just, I mean, it's exciting. And, you know, 5G is something that we've, as a world, have been expecting and really been kind of excited for. And you guys are implementing that into your box. I think that's that's absolutely amazing. Um, some of the things that you kind of hit on in that 
um, leads me to my next one. Um, in October, you guys had an announcement, um, which you made a, an agreement with Valkyrie, or excuse me, with Ag Eagle, um, and you agreed to a two year contract. Could you talk about how this will be beneficial for your guys' company and what we can expect from that agreement with Ag Eagle? Sure. Um, you know, we love the team at Ag Eagle. They're a phenomenal group and we never cease to be impressed with, you know, what they're doing. Um, you know, they had the, um, they had the vision that we had. And so not only did it make sense to utilize their manufacturing um, and their growing, you know, footprint now that they moved to Wichita, um, you know, we see a lot of synergies with Ag Eagle. So um, we're very excited that they, are going to be manufacturing. We believe they have all the expertise needed and we can count on them to, you know, meet our deadlines. Um, and they, they took an equity position in us. So the fact that they had that faith in us, you know, really cemented it for us that they believe in the vision like we do. And so, um, you know, we're very excited about having increased distribution through them and increased presence. You know, they just got pulled into the, the Beyond program in Kansas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that's a huge win for them. Um, we're very excited to be, um, you know, supporting them for whatever they're going to be doing in that. Um, but we see a lot of synergies with Ag Eagle outside of just those those um, core areas, so to speak, right? And Michael has an extremely, um, I wouldn't even call it an aggressive vision. I would say it's a very realistic vision. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants to get these things done on a, a realistic timeline, but he's not he's not taking his foot off the gas, right? So yep. those are the kind of teams we like working with. And so as we start to develop these things, and I'm not sure if I can publicly talk about some of the things we're working on, but there should be some very exciting announcements. That's that's absolutely amazing to hear. And I'm sure a lot of people watching are definitely going to be excited about that. Um, kind of to reiterate a little bit on the Beyond program, are they going to be able to incorporate, because I know a lot of it's for Beyond the line of sight, are they going to be able to incorporate your guys's, you know, box into that, you know, whole entire system at all or? You know, we're, we're kind of taking their lead on it. It's all, yep. you know, a very new situation. Um, we are ready if they do want to incorporate the landing stations to, to showcase for the FP, uh, FAA. Um, if for some reason they, you know, want to do the BVLOS and then bring us in at a later time, we're still happy to support them. So, um, you know, we're, we're in the beginning looks of that, but, um, you know, I can't speak one way or another yet. Yep, completely understand. Um, and kind of continuing on, so I, like I said, I think you guys, <clears throat> I, I truly do think you have a special product uh, for something that will be very, very important here in the near future, especially with the current pandemic we're going through. Um, can you guys get, or can you give a brief timeline on the expectations for like drone delivery and what should we be expecting to be delivered first really? And how will Valkyrie have a role in that? Sure. Um, what we're seeing is, is, very systemic approaches by all the regulators from the FAA, um, Transport Canada, and, and all the European agencies. Um, what's going to happen is you're going to see these iterations and, you know, sometimes for guys like me inside the industry, it almost seems like an eternity. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's going to happen and it's going to seem like it happened overnight once it does. Um, you're going to see these pockets of, of growth, right? So yeah. like Kansas is growing, you know, Zing and, and Ag Eagle in, in Kansas and, um, you know, the 10 other sites the FAA has been working with. And so you're starting to see these little concentrated circles where, you know, you're going to have different packages being moved. Um, I would say right now, predominantly, it's, it's a lot of medical, a lot of high value items. Um, yeah. It justifies, you know, some of these initial costs, right? I mean, like anything coming into market, right? It, it's always going to be more expensive when it's first developed than 10 years into it. So um, the economics really make a lot of sense for medical deliveries, but as these systems are getting proofed out and we're, um, you know, making them better, cheaper, faster, you know, that's driving the cost down. So um, I would say that it opens up into a much greater market um, in the next 18 months. Um, we're going to hear a lot of good news uh, coming out over the next 18 months and there's going to be a lot of big um, announcements and, and exciting things happening across the industry and it's all starting to come together. Um, what we've really seen was up through 2018, the main focus was on the drone, right? Mm -hmm. All about drone hardware and everything else was, was kind of too far ahead. Yeah. Um, 
2019 and 2020, we're seeing, you know, the FAA is doing uh, remote ID. Um, similar things are happening in, in Europe and Canada. And now that they've established that they've been able to contact the drone, it can keep um, in regulation with all the airspace requirements and everything else. Um, now the, the requirements are BVLOS, right? Now the FAA is saying we feel comfortable to this point. Now we want to get into BVLOS. So we really see 2021 and beyond being about the ecosystem integrating, right? The uh, infrastructure coming together, right? Having um, our landing stations, having recharging, having all these various things that are going to turn this into a full blown logistics network as opposed to, you know, the toys and novelties of 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really going to um, kind of grow. These, these circles of use are going to grow and you'll start with maybe medical deliveries and then they might add in a few other different items. And before long, you'll have other ones popping up and these, these circles will start overlapping. And that's really when the network is starting to take shape. Um, I believe that we're going to start seeing drone deliveries to a number of people's um, homes in these various places over the yep. next 18 months. Um, and then realistically over the next uh, five years, I would say, is is the full timeline, right? Uh, you know, people always ask me why I think five years, I think drone deliveries will be happening over the next two years. I don't think it will be accessible for every single person to order any item from whether it be Uber Eats, Amazon, whomever, for about five years. I think it's going to take that long for the system to really um, come into itself. Um, but for right now, it, the, the technology proving and integrating these systems are the key factors that are going to make the next 18 months critical. Yeah. And I, you know, I think with, with your guys' vision and obviously there's other companies that have the vision and kind of the tracking it down. I think that there's a lot of people around that are in the very infant stages of just drones in general. And I think that as it starts to, those people start to catch up with what you guys are envisioning. I think it's like you said, it's just going to pop and take off. And, you know, then I was thinking too, as I'm doing videos, I'm thinking, I think of all kinds of things as I'm doing them. And I'm like, well, I could implement that. I can implement that. And it's like, once everything is in place, then people have to be put into those tasks and they have to be able to do those tasks. So those are all the things that I keep thinking about too, is like, once everything is established, then those people have to, to learn the programs and, and learn how to do those things. And so there's just, like you said, there's still you know, room for improvement, or I guess you could say, or growth, but I think it's definitely, definitely, definitely coming for sure. So that's I mean, absolutely, that's awesome. If you look at the economics of it, I mean, 115 years ago, if you were driving a car, you mm -hmm. could drive for two miles an hour and somebody was standing in front of you with a flag and a lantern to make sure you didn't run over pedestrians at two miles an hour. And now we have, you know, Bugatti supercars, yeah. right? The, the, the ability for technology to get into everyday life once it hits its stride is is remarkable yeah. and you know i see drones at that same stage right now right you got to have all of these things you know essentially you know you can't fly without the waiver beyond visual and all these other things it's it's the guy with the lantern and the flag right? yeah it's just that time they're they're getting it all figured out but before long it's going to be like it's been here nonstop. I mean, the smartphone, I always say it's 12 years old. Yeah. Think about how much the world has changed in the last 12 years from just the first iPhone. Yeah. Right. And all the things that it opened up from social media to all these other things, it it's, it's just at the beginning of what this is going to be. I wouldn't even say the tip of the tip of the iceberg has even been breached yet. So yeah. to your point, I mean, there's going to be massive jobs around the maintenance, the repair, the flight, the, everything that goes into these things. And I really think over the next decade, it's going to be one of the, you know, saving graces for a lot of the issues that have arisen already this year. 